please note that this video contains spoilers. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. Desperado movie thoughts. So, the... I guess again I'll start with some of the positive. I love Navajas, you know, and if, in case you didn't put it together from, you know, if you don't know Spanish, yeah, I, think, I think it means like blade or blades. Navajas, Danny Trejo, the knife thrower, you know. Badass. Just awesome. I love the build-up to it. You know, first you'd see him with the one knife. And he's, you know, he's dialing a phone. He doesn't just dial the phone. He uses the knife. You know, just... Awesome. You know, and you don't hear him talk. Because, you know, in my mind, he does not talk. You know, he, I don't know, he projects his... Actually, he might just be listening to something. No, wait. He, he's supposed to, like, report back... In my mind, he never actually talks, you know, just like in the movie. And, you know, just this kind of... And, and he's behind... You know, you just see him pop up every now and then for the first bit, until he gets killed. You know, he's behind Tavo, who, you know, the, who, in case you're not aware, he's the, you know, the guy who ends up dual-wielding guns, and he shoots when he almost hits Sam Hayek, and then, you know... Desperado, El Mariachi turns the guns on himself. Navaja sees that, and he's like, should I, you know, should I follow El Mariachi? And then he's like, oh, wait, this other guy I might kill him. I'm just gonna stand back, you know. that That's great how that has the, you know, because, you know, there's no need to get involved in that. And then, you know, when Buscemi is, you know, rushing out of the church, and, you know, yeah, suddenly he just opens the close, the until then closed vest, you know. Presumably he had kept it closed so that it would conceal the squibs that they had placed there. Notice how when he gets shot, he only gets shot in, like, the shoulders, because that's where, it, where it's easy to conceal you know, squibs. Anyway, he opens the vest, Knives, you know, and a, a tattoo of a woman on his chest, you know, but yeah, and the knives go just flying through the it's awesome, you know, that is just perfect the way they did that. And then he, you know, goes off against the guys in the car, you know, killing several of them before they kill him. Now, that is, of course, one issue where, I mean, in the first movie, there was the mistaken identity, and you could kind of, I don't know, it was the plot, it was the excuse for a plot, you know. In this one, again, a mistaken identity, it's just, it's kind of boring to reuse that idea, you know, and then just this, why didn't he get a, you know, the, the first time he asks for it, Excuse me, he doesn't get a description of what Navajas looks like, you know. And, yeah, why, why wouldn't they be ready with a description, you know, about to say, the, you know, did, did they not figure that maybe he'd get killed from, you know. And we never, that's another thing, we never learn exactly, it's just the Colombians, you know, it's not exactly clear why is he under so much pressure from them, you know? We, we never get a proper sense of where he is in the hierarchy, you know? They just... Rodriguez needed something for Bucho to be afraid of because, you know, he doesn't have the obvious weakness that Moko had, which is good. I'm really glad that he didn't reuse that, although apparently, you know, Bucho and Car Carolina have been together, you know? I really can't fault him for that. Now, the Tavo scene does, of course, also bring up the issue of what the crap happened to Tavo. You know, 
you have the, you know, you got the Tabasco bar shootout, you know, L is talking to the bartender and going like, you just need to take me to Bucho, then this movie can end and it'll be an hour shorter. Cheech Marin gets his ass shot by the, you know, surprisingly loud silenced gun of the cashier person. L and the cashier shoot it out. And then Tavo walks up from the other street. How did that happen? I can live with there maybe being another path out of that hidden area so that he didn't have to go back out through the bar. But why didn't he go back out through the bar? Did he just figure, well, I heard a gunshot and now I'm not hearing anything? I'm sure that was the cashier shooting L. You know, what if he hadn't spotted him as he walked up the street? He seems like, oh, wait, he's still there. Why didn't he, you know, go as backup? What, what was he doing? Where did he go? Why did he go, you know? And just, yeah, this, this literally makes no sense. And there's just, it's just there so that, I don't even know. I guess Rodriguez just needed him to... You know, I don't know, I, I think Rodriguez wanted to end the bar scene with the, you know, shot of just the, what's it called, the, the lights being blown out, you know, and that is cool. But, yeah, it just, yeah. I do love the, you know, the, the humor of right after the guy next to Tarantino is shot, you know, and it, Two guys are dragging his corpse away, and a third one is like mopping up the blood after them. That's pretty good. Now the I quite like how you know I love Kampa and Kino. You know I I don't who who doesn't, especially Kampa, and it's not just because it's Carlos Gallardo Gallarda, something like that. Gallarda playing the role. It's the dual machine guns, you know, just that is friggin' awesome. And, you know, yeah, just all the people, both of them take out, you know, and you have this sort of thing of the, the car, which is armor plated, is taken out by, yeah, I think it's two rockets by the end of it, you know. And, yeah, that's, that's great. You know, because it is this kind of thing of how was his, you know, L gonna take that out? And all the people gunned down by the machine gun. Now, I guess the, you know, them being just, ooh, psycho, like he talks about, is really just that they don't take cover, you know, slightly more than L doesn't. Because if you watch the film, he's not taking cover either and never getting shot for some reason. Now, I gotta love how at the end of that, you know, the, the kid gets shot because he was reaching for his guitar, and then, you know, that makes decent enough sense. He's a kid, he's stupid. It's, it's in their blood, I think, you know. Some, it never leaves their blood. Now, yeah, you know, so he, you know, and the guitar means a lot to him, you know. And, you know, then, then they take him to the hospital because apparently for the kid, you know, L does not want to go to the hospital there, but the kid, ah, sure, I'm sure it'll be fine, you know, even if it is apparently a horrible hospital. I like these little hints of, you know, Bucho being, you know, he's he's got the, what's it called, like, um, ashtray, which is shaped like a guitar, which might tell you that he's not a big fan of Mariachi. And when he hears the kid playing the guitar, you know, he has this, you know, face, and you're, you're kind of wondering at first what that's about, and then, you know, and, heck, after you've seen the entire movie, you might wonder, did he hear that played by his brother at some point, you know, when they were younger? 
is it something that he thought of when he was, you know, when they were a family? Now, I would like to point out that the twists in the film, in addition to being either just convenient or essentially meaningless. I mean, nothing comes out of Bucho and Mariachi being brothers. Absolutely nothing. You know, it's he still kills Bucho, and you know, I, I get it. You know, I wouldn't have let him, you know, touch Salma either. But yeah, you know, it doesn't really change anything. And you have this sort of theme of oh, you know, my brother. You know, because he talks about. Steve Buscemi is the closest thing he ever had to a real brother, and he downright says to him, you know, you're like, suddenly you're like my older brother or something like that, you know. It's, yeah, yeah, it doesn't really amount to anything, you know. If He's still just this, you know, Bucho is just this black and white evil bad guy, you know, there's nothing special to it, and also just, don't, don't get me started on how this, you know, this being a 90s movie, of course the bad guy has to be a drug dealer. A drug baron, really. Now, but yes, the, the twists, you know, Mariachi could have said from very early on that, you know, very, he could have told Carolina that you know, a, a lot of the twists in this are kind of only twists because the characters decided not to say it when they learned it, you know, when they realized it, when they could have said it first. So, yeah, you know, he doesn't tell her right there on the, you know, up on the roof, and... Yeah, I guess he just eventually decides that he'd rather have Salma, you know... Again, I can't blame him, than his brother. But yeah, he could have told her up there on the roof, and she could have told him that the money was in the books when she was, you know, running towards them, or again, when they were on the roof, you know. And it's like, you know, Kampa and Kino, he's like, you know, oh, I, I can't call them, they'll just, you know, destroy everything and he'll still look it away. But I have no money. Okay, I'll call them then, you know, just, okay. There's not really any motivation. I also love how just utterly random and unmotivated it is that all of them just meet on that street. You know, he doesn't say over the phone, we'll meet at this particular street. And did one of them walk there? You know, Kampa drives, but Kino, he just walks up. Did, you know, did Kampa, you know, give him a lift to one particular street, then say, okay, let's meet up that street and I'll drive over here that way. It'll look much cooler when we all walk up. Okay, good. You know, and yeah, and the bad guys just go there as well. Again, there's been no contact. It's not like he, it's not like you had that cliche scene that would have at least explained it of L calls the bad guy on his cell phone and it's like, if you want, blah, 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 you know, meet here and we'll settle it. You know, nope, it's just everybody decided that that's where they're going to go, you know, and they're just standing out in the middle of everywhere and, you know, almost getting their ass shot right away, you know. I guess it's a good thing that that guitar case is bulletproof. The opening sequence is just phenomenal. I love the, you know, little details like how he orders a soda, like in the first movie, you know. But yeah, the, the way he just blows them apart, the sign, the client is always wrong, that the bartender got it worse than anybody, you know, all those little, just excellent. The, excuse me, in, in general, I just, excuse me, I think that one of Rodriguez's real strengths, maybe especially in the action scenes, is juggling a lot of elements, you know, quite well. I love the tension of the Tabasco bar shootout when, you know, the, the borrower Chich Marin, Marin is the bartender, you know, that he just, you know, you, you have him walking in with the guitar and, you know, being asked, is well, what's in that? It's just my guitar and he sets it down, he's about to get it back up and then, oh, wait, and he's going to be held up by a guy with a gun. Someone else opens the guitar case and he looks in. And it appears to be a guitar, and he, you know, the bartender, what is it? Ah, it's just a guitar. And I said, ah, yeah, I said, just don't worry. And, 
Now the guy with the gun slowly walks away, but he's kind of still scowling at him. He's like, ah, I don't trust you, dude. And then suddenly, the guitar lid, the second lid, opens up, revealing all the guns. He yells to the bartender, it's him. The guy with the gun turns back. Antonio tries to defuse the situation, and of course it ends up with him having to shoot everybody. Just all the elements, just the, the build-up towards the inevitable shootout there, you know, very nicely done. I guess there was gasoline in the bookstore, since it does blow up at least once. That was interesting. The the whole idea of, again, you know, the, the girl is, you know, working with or working for the, you know, the bad guy, again, it's just, yeah, again, just reusing ideas and not terribly interesting, although it is, you know, I would say that the first time you watch it, you don't know for sure that she didn't you know, tell him, tell uh, Bucho that Desperado was at the church, although, you know, I guess it does, uh, you know, the, the viewer might realize that, well, a little later, anyway, you know, we, you know, Navajas wasn't sent by Bucho, but I guess you don't know that at that point in the film. I suppose that more or less covers it. But but yes, also just the whole thing with Navajas. I guess it's to prolong the film. It's just to give them, you know, someone to kill and, and give us a couple of more action scenes. You know, because just Navajas throwing some knives at Desperado, you know, that doesn't last for terribly long, so you know, he needed to have them, you know, Navajas fighting some more people that he could actually kill and that would shoot back and, you know, stuff like that, so he gets that out of it, but, yeah. It's just, it's again, you know, this kind of... You know, El Mariachi isn't even very good at hiding, you know, he's not very... He's not very discreet. Also, apparently with that scorpion on the back of his jacket. I guess he's a member of the Brotherhood of Nod or something. But yeah, you know, he's not doing a very good job of hiding, so they would be able to find him pretty quickly. And yeah, that that they don't, you know, it's that they try to, he tries to explain it by having characters, you know, only Bucho really believes that you know, El Mariachi exists, but, yeah. And we have the, the sort of thematic of, you know, oh, it's you know, it's easier to pull a trigger than play guitar, it's easier to destroy than to create, and, you know, this stuff. Again, if it just, if it particularly amounted to anything, you know, And then there at the end, you know, you killed my men, will they kill the woman I loved? So, Moko was working for Bucho, and that whole thing, but Bucho didn't even care about El Mariachi before he started, you know, moving in on his, you know, sort of very close personal territory, you know, so... Yeah, the, again, uh, plot continuity issues, you know, and, you know, I guess when the kid got hit, although that could just have easily, actually considering the angle, I guess it's more likely that it was bullet by, you know, one of the three guitaristas, but anyway, yeah, that, you know, I guess that goes ahead and makes it personal, you know, not Domino, not... Buscemi, which is literally his character name. Nope, the kid that he was trying to, you know, teach, 
guitar lessons too. Yeah, I suppose that is it. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.